I'm Detective Chuck Heidel with the Boulder Police Department, and I'm here to talk about um, a missing persons case, possibly a homicide case, involving uh, Fabian Del Rosario. Um, in 1987, um, Fabian was a 20-year-old college student at the University of Colorado. <clears throat> he had a girlfriend, had several um, close friends that he hung around with. Um, Fabian, by all accounts, um, was um, not only a CU student, but was involved in um, trafficking some um, mid-level type amounts of uh, drugs, specifically specifically cocaine. Um, the week that Fabian went missing um, was the, um, the, the last week of August of 87. Fabian was uh, known to his girlfriend and his friends to be pretty punctual and um, on time in, in matters, especially with his girlfriend. Um, on the evening of August 28th of 87, um, he called his girlfriend um, at her work and told her that he would pick her up around 7.30 that evening to go out to dinner with some friends. Fabian never showed up. Uh, by 8 o'clock, his girlfriend decided to, um, to walk home. So at about 1 o'clock in the afternoon on August 30th, uh, Fabian's girlfriend finally made a missing persons report to become concerned enough and had been calling his friends and family and nobody knew where he was and this was very um, unlike him not to check in with anybody. Um, the, next, uh, the next thing that's known about his whereabouts is, is his car is located. <clears throat> uh, the uh, car's license plate had been put into the National Crime Information Center, NCIC. Um, Officer Og Carter um, got a call to that, uh, the crossroads on this car being parked there, ran the plate and found out it was a missing car that belonged to uh, Fabian. Was searched and a uh, large amount of blood was found um, in the front of the vehicle, um, all inside the vehicle. There was enough blood that investigators at the time and, and other criminalists that have looked at this case uh, believe that it was enough um, to uh, enough to be there to be um, fairly certain that Fabian uh, probably died from these these wounds that he had, whatever they were. So this is where the car would have been found, right? Right here. berm right there, grassy knoll, car would have been right there. Investigators uh, started looking for him. Um, they went back through all of his records, they interviewed all of his friends, um, they talked with his family members, uh, and again the last person that saw, that would have seen Fabian, um, was, uh, was his girlfriend and um, she was cleared um, as a suspect in this case, um, as were uh, the friends that he was hanging around with at the time. We've started to open, uh, we've started opening and working on cold cases, and this was one of the priority ones that we, we've opened up, um, mostly because of the age of the case, and <clears throat> as the case, cases get older, the people involved in the cases get older, memories fade, and so we wanted to hit this case um, hot and heavy um, while these people are hopefully still around. And our hope is, is that somebody will come forward with some information that they maybe weren't willing to back in 1987. Uh, there might have been a lot of reasons some people didn't come forward. If it was drug related, um, they may have been afraid of, um, of reprisal from the people that uh, killed Fabian. Uh, they may have been concerned about them being involved in the drug, drug trade themselves. Uh, they may have been afraid of law enforcement. We're hoping now that statute of limitations on those types of crimes anyway are gone, that people will be more willing to come forward. And, you know, we'd like to settle this for the family. We'd like to get them some closure on it. Um, his mom and dad would like to know what happened to him. His sister and all the families in Florida, but his sister would like to um, have some closure on this. and. You know, ultimately, at the very least, we'd like to be able to find his remains so that they